Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. Today, we are joined by a friend of ours, a, a gentleman who's been on the show before, the lead voice behind a group called New Politics. Well, he's ventured off on his own as a solo artist for the first time in a number of years. He had taken a break, was writing songs, but uh, he's with us now today to talk about his newest project. Soren Hansen is with us. Hello. Hello. How are you? I am good. Having me. How do they say hello in Denmark? Hi. Wow, that's complicated. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if I can learn that. No, yeah, I know we it. we were talking so, off the air that your name, Soren, is how Americans would pronounce your name, but how would your name be pronounced back home? Oh, that it's it's a tricky one. It, you say Cern. Song? Cern. Song. Cern. Like sing a song. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost. Yeah, when I, <laughs> over here, I had a lot of, um, you know, because I have an accent and stuff, when... Um, Sometimes when I say, say somebody asks me, "Hey, uh, uh, you know, who, who are you?" I say, "I'm so I'm Soren." They say, "Oh, it's okay, no worries." Like they mm. think I'm saying I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time you were on the show, you're with the whole band. Why did you decide to leave New Politics and do your own thing? Um, I mean, we've been at it for a while. We played. I we did ten years, and and um, you know, just life life just kind of happens and. Uh, we went on a hiatus. And we're still on a hiatus, so uh, maybe in the future we'll make a record. But uh, but I I just always you know wrote music and wanted to wanted to write and and I worked with a bunch of musicians here in Nashville. I was a, you know as a producer and a writer and stuff. And and then this record just kind of came about, and a friend sent it to NC Records, and they said, Hey, would you would you want to would you want to release a record and and you know, I, I didn't even see this happening. So when it, when it did happen, it was an incredible experience because all the songs came from a place where I was just writing about a subject that was really important to me. And um, yeah, it was it was it, it was really organic, and and I just really loved the guys at the label. So it 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 just kind of happened, you know. Mm. And and uh, yeah, it, and we'll get more into the the actual special reason the special songs what makes the song special to you as yeah. as we go throughout the interview um is this part of a new album the yes music you're put and what's oh, the new oh, album record. called it's called soren hansen it's it's a self-titled album all right soren yeah. hansen yeah. and uh, when's it coming out it's coming out in uh, in june in june okay yeah. and i assume you'll be touring at that time to promote absolutely. the absolutely absolutely okay. All right, that's great. Now, New Politics had six albums. Of course, they had an international global hit with Harlem. And so now you've decided you wanted to return to the singing part of this because you've yeah. been writing songs. And so what is it that brought you back? What made you decide you want to return to singing? Ooh. Well, I th I think it was it was one of those things that I I got to I got to work with with a lot of artists as somebody behind the scene, you know, and, and I love that. I love producing and recording and, and, um, and then once in a while I would write a song that s sounded right with my voice in it. And I, you know, I started having some ideas and, and they all just, you know, piled up in a Dropbox and in mm -hmm. a weird way that was okay with me that, you know, the, I think a lot of artists have that Dropbox folder that's filled with songs and, and I, I didn't think too much about it. So, um, I mean, I, I went to Pilgrimage, which is, it's a festival here in Nashville. And I saw my, my friend play, and this is, I guess this is a year and a half ago. And that was the first time in maybe five years that I felt, oh, I really want to be on stage again. Cause it's, you know, we, I mean, we played a lot of shows. We played 1500 shows maybe with new politics and, and wow. some years we did, we were gone 300 days a year and, and to, I, I think in a, in a way I was a little burned out and I, and I didn't really know what to say either, you know, cause you, you're just kind of going with it and, and it was fun, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world, mm -hmm. but um, I, I just, I just, I, I kept saying to other people, you know, I think I'm done. I think I'm done uh, playing, playing shows. If I never have to play a show again, I'll be fine. <laughs> but it wasn't true. You know, I, I started missing that and then seeing my, my friend play at the festival and it was broad daylight and it was, fun and it was like it was 
it was all the right reasons. You know, why why do you get into music? You don't get into it because you want to, you know, you want the headline spot and you want to play the, you know, the big shows and all that. It's fun, but it's not why you got into it. You got into it because you wanted to feel that like electricity with between you and the audience and and watching somebody sing along to a song that you wrote is incredible. And and that was like that was always the you know that was always the um that was always the the, the essence of of why i love music so feeling mm-hmm. like that again as it all just kind of came about a week later mm-hmm. a week later I, I i spoke to the label and it's so weird how that happens right it's almost like when you're ready for it then certain things happen and and that felt just amazing so lo- short story long <laughs> uh, well, it's it's you know I know that as an artist, a performer, uh, performers love the crowd. They love the response. They certainly love the shows that go well. Not so much the ones that don't go so well, but the, the <laughs> real good problem. audiences. Uh, you know, there's nothing like being adored by you know a thousand or ten thousand or fifty thousand strangers. You know, for, and enjoying your music. And as you said, singing along with you now as a band from Denmark. Uh, you decided to sing in English. Yeah. Well, so the, the, I was kind of the, we would, we were two singers in new politics and, and the main guy, he, um, he was half American. So for him, we actually, we never spoke Danish to each other. His, <laughs> his Danish was, was, um, uh, not, not amazing. So, so for him, it was easy to, to, to just you know and somebody like me i grew up with american music and with british music so i wanted that so bad yeah it's, it's funny how that works right <laughs> yes i love how you characterize his danish was not amazing yeah no, it was, it was <laughs> how like, gentle you are yeah how diplomatic you I, are <laughs> yeah it was i mean he he knew all the words and stuff you know but but for him it was it was definitely the the second mm. language so mm. and I and I and I remember when I met him, I was like, I I want to you know I I want to be better at speaking English. So so it was kind of a win win situation. Yeah. So we always did that. And mm. uh, I mean, it's been a learning curve for me, you know. So so now I feel like when I sing, it's not very noticeable because just because when you sing, you you use a different you know you use your voice differently, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, and and it's it's so funny. A lot of Americans will say, "Oh, it's so cool, you have an accent." And you know, me, I'm like, oh, "Do I have an accent? Do I still have an accent?" It's like, "Yeah, you do." <laughs> <laughs> so you know, yeah. So we we just you know we went with that, and 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 it went well. Five months after we formed the band, we moved to America, and and it's you know that's been I mean it's been 14 years. Since. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. I mean, what was the biggest change? From living in Denmark to living in America, what what was your what do you miss in oh. Nashville that you could get at home? Well, there's always obviously the food and my friends and family and stuff. You know that it's it's limited. I always consider myself being one of those people who got on on the boat and went across the Atlantic. And you know, when you move somewhere, especially when you move to a different country, you you, you start making friends. You start you start forming a different bond. So now I, I don't know if I'll ever be, you know, I'll always be a foreigner to a certain extent in America, but I'm always, I'm also a foreigner in Denmark, which is interesting after all these years. Uh, I do miss, I do miss the food. I, I can miss the culture sometimes. It's very nice and safe. And, and it's also a little, a little plain where in America you have, you have the best of everything and sometimes the worst. And, and you have the, the best food is over here probably also the worst food and you know you 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 have the you have mountains you have deserts you have most beautiful things over here and 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 i love that i love the diversity in america i love the diversity that people are different over here and and i think one of the one of the fa- most fundamental things about america is that is trying to find space for all of that you know and that that's something you don't see in a country like denmark with with five six million people Mm -hmm. so uh i do miss that but i do feel that i belong here Hmm. well we're glad you're here and you're here and you know not necessarily a a great time 
you know, politically speaking, it's 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 a kind of a bumpy road right now. It's bumpy. Uh, it's been it's bumpy definitely for a, while. A, a lot, there's a bumpy road, but um, at least music can give us an escape from the news headlines of the day, which is great. So I'm going to ask if you wouldn't mind doing a song for us. Yes, absolutely. And what is the song you're going to sing first? This one is, is called uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. All right. Here is Soren Hansen. This is called Seventeen. Here on Border Crossings. Hello, hello, what is it I'm trying to say? My words, they stumble, my tongue gets twisted every day. I wish I could hold you even closer now, now. Mom was flying in space and dad was selling the seas. Having drinks with strangers I would never meet. Will you send me a postcard saying you're okay? Okay. Hold me just a little bit closer, just like back when I was 17 and you said, hey, now that's no world to be afraid of. That was me, that was me, but back when I was 17. When I was 17 I could see you were changing You were losing hope Like you saw your life Through a kaleidoscope Do you ever just wish That you could turn back time Sometimes Hold me Just a little bit closer Just like and you said, hey, now that's the world to be afraid of. That was me, that was me. But back when I was 17, when I was 17, mm-hmm. when I was 17, mm-hmm. when I was 17. Say goodbye, cause I had to leave To find all my heartaches in a city out there But I hear you sing through the winter breeze All of my favorite melodies When I was 17, just a little bit closer Just like back when I was 17 And you said, hey now, that's no way to be afraid of That was me, that was me But back when I was 17 When I was 17 When I was 17 mm, When I was 17 mm, When I was 17 Border Crossings, and that song is 17. It's from Soren Hansen. The new album is called Soren Hansen. Uh, Is this your first solo project? It is. It is my first solo project, yes. That's exciting. It's exciting. It's terrifying. It's fun. It's all of that. Yes. It must be terrifying because you're used to having, you know, bandmates and, you know, there's familiarity and you're and other other people to sing with that you know and then now you get on stage and you're the focus and it's all about you and uh and you haven't done it in a bit so yeah it, it's uh it's it's terrifying and it's exciting <laughs> it's all of that <laughs> both at yeah, the same it, time it, now we it, were talking it, about yeah. what you missed about Denmark and you said the food so i w- i wanted to ask because we're broadcasting to an international audience in 100 different countries right now uh, what would a typical meal in Denmark be? What, what what do you eat back home that you miss that you can't really find much here? I feel I have to pick something that I love because I'm Danish. But okay. most people are going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I So we have this bread. The, the bread is fantastic. Every Everybody here in America who tried the bread, it's like this dark rye bread. It's fantastic. It's healthy. It's good. It's filling it's all of it's it's all the good stuff 
the thing you put on top of that is like all sorts of, you know, smorgasbord. That's pretty much what that is. I, mm -hmm. I even think the word comes from that. I might be wrong, but I think that means that you have a bunch of different toppings you put on the bread and then um, you make, you make a, you know, you, you have these open face sandwiches. That's kind of the national dish. Mm. One of those things is pickled herring. That's common here. People eat pickled herring here in the States. I, I don't see it very often, but no. I'm glad to hear you do because it's delicious. Mm, well, that's great. Well, I thought you were going to tell me this red bread was made of pig's blood or something. Oh, like we that. do have, uh, you have sausages that are made of pig's blood. Yes. And oh. I grew up on those. Okay. All yeah, right. Dad, Sounds my, close. My, my dad was a fisherman. He he would have fish hanging outside the house drying mm. and then you would eat it like beef jerky, but fish and mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Soren Hansen is our guest. And so you mentioned your dad was a fisherman and mom took care of you and raised you. And then uh, you had a tragic loss. Mom passed away. Yeah. And that that is uh, the inspiration for a number of different songs on yeah. your new album. I understand. Yeah, yeah including 17. Uh, that, is, that is the inspiration. And I, I think that because I didn't have the you know, a lot of times if you're a band and you're trying to you're writing a record, you're trying to write songs that that you, you know you can't help yourself you you want to write a song that that has a that has radio potential and all that kind of stuff so uh for this record i i didn't think about that for one second so i um yeah i just i wrote five songs that probably f from that because i i never processed it actually we were recording the last new politics record when i got the phone call and i think one of the hardest things for me was that I never saw any of that happening, you know, so you're, you're in a different country, you're far away. And when you do talk to your family, you talk about either, either something exciting or just, you know, maybe a bit of everyday things, but you, you don't, you don't see somebody every day. So you don't notice the years go by. And, and in a way, I just felt pretty self-absorbed to be honest. And so, you know, so, so all that stuff went down and, and I, I don't think I, I had a way of processing it. And, and so, you know, you music is such a great way for an artist to put, um, to put an image on something. So maybe you don't know how to describe it yourself, but you're, you're able to, um, you're able to paint a picture that mm -hmm. somebody else can understand. And even if they can't necessarily relate to the words, they can relate to, to the tone and to the, you know, to some of the words in the, in the, in their own, you know, in, in, in their world. And, and, you know, for, for me, I, I, I wrote a lot of songs about, about it and, and they might sound a bit like pop songs because that's who I am, but, but, you know, they're, they're definitely rooted in something heavy, you know, mm -hmm. it was important for me, but again, if they never left the Dropbox, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I, I, I did, I didn't consider them suddenly being like, oh, you, you actually made a record. And I'm, re I'm really proud of that. That's, mm. that's a really cool feeling because I get to honor her. You know, yes. That's, that's and I'm sure she's looking down and she's very proud of you from up above. And, uh, you know, it, it had to be difficult to not be with her when this time came uh, to be so far away. Uh, yeah. I'm certain, certainly as close as you were with your mom, but uh, now you're here in America living in Nashville. Soren Hansen is our guest on Border Crossings, and you're going to do another song for us. Yes. This one is Dream That I Die, and uh, it's the first single off of the record. Dream That I Die, Soren Hansen on Border Crossings. It's soft in the sunlight I close the window Cause I'm scared of the moonlight Oh my, oh my I see the dust on the mirror Can't see myself But the darkness is familiar Look at me, I'm falling in silence I'm barely holding on If I leave in the middle of the night What am I doing? Am I fading? 
thought I never thought that I could be something I keep my toes in the water when the tide comes And I keep sinking deeper till I'm no one Look at me, I'm falling in silence I'm barely holding on If I leave in the middle of the night then to forget am I in over my head I don't remember why I always dream that I die dream that I die why can't it be that I'm flying without always dying without letting They say that it should be easy But hope always leaves me when I am alone Look at me now Look at me, I'm falling in silence I'm barely holding on If I leave in the middle of the night then Will I be moving on? Am I supposed to forget? Crossings. That's Soren Hansen. Dream that I die. Tell me about that song. So that song uh, was written. Was written. I wrote this one with my two dear friends uh, Femke Weidemer and uh, Paul De Vincenzo, who is he's uh, he, Paul. Paul's family is from New York, and they're my American. They're my American family. I'm I'm the adopted son. Had spent a lot of Christmases and Thanksgivings with them, and and uh, he's here in Nashville. And it was one of those random rights, you know. I I had this, I had the riff, and I loved how it sounded. And he came over, and we did something. And Femke came over, and we wrote a song. And and the song was was it was based on a. I was sitting on a plane, and I I suddenly that line popped into my into my head, and and um, it's about anxiety. Hmm. which is something that I can relate to. <laughs> I think a lot of people can relate to that because our yes. our lives are super stressful and we're really good at stressing ourselves out too. And, you know, we have goals and we have dreams and we have expectations that might not even be, they might not even be somebody else's expectations. They're probably our own expectations. And it's just social media comparison all this kind of stuff it's just it's a part of our of our uh it's just a part of life of yes 2024 it's been like that for a while yes it's our new culture and unfortunately yeah. we are exposed and vulnerable very because we're out there and uh there's so many different as you said social media 20 years ago there wasn't it was my yeah. space and that was about it and then uh, ever since it's evolved now to where you know people can comment and anonymously they can you know whatever and it's sometimes not nice stuff that people say yeah, so it, it can be it, it it can be a it can be a rough place it's also beautiful you know because you you have you have a way for people to to put something out like like art or or even opinions you know you have a platform where where you're able to do that so that there's a lot of good th good there too but but i would say that that uh, for somebody like me who is who also drinks like i don't know how much coffee but i can't i can't stop <laughs> you know I, I love coffee uh that probably doesn't help either so i've i've always had like you know i've always on edge and you know you could probably clinically say that i have adhd or whatever it is you know which mm -hmm. has also been a beautiful thing being a musician because you get to you know i can hyper focus for 14 hours straight and you know right. but, of, but anxiety that's a thing. That's a thing, you know, because because um, um, yeah, it's 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 a thing. For, yes, for me and I think a lot of other people. So that's yeah. what the song is about. It's about like just sometimes it feels so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And music, songwriting, 
which you do so well, can be very therapeutic. Oh, I mean, it's amazing. It's, a, it's an outlet. It's a way for you to express something yeah. that otherwise you can't. And you can share this with many, many, many people. And some of them may know the truth behind the songs, the meaning to you, and some may not. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it nonetheless gives you an opportunity to express yourself, which I think is very therapeutic. Oh, it's 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 incredible. It's incredible. And it's, you know, growing up with music and being a music fan myself, uh, I definitely they had a lot of songs that, you know, they would make me cry or they would make me just feel something. And and uh, that that thing is probably also one of the reasons for why we we get into music and why we start making music is because you know, to be able to take your own feelings and putting them into something that that it only exists up here and then suddenly becomes this physical thing and you're sitting late at night maybe and you and you got it, you got it, you got that thing, you know, and you just know it. And it's it's the it's the most it's the exact opposite of anxiety and all that. It's it's that thing that I think we all live for. It's that feeling of like you did something incredible. You know, that, right. That's, that's it's a rush, you know, it's exhilarating. It's it's yeah. for quite a feeling. Soren Hansen is uh, with us here on Border Crossings. We're talking about his brand new album, his very first solo album, uh, which is called Soren Hansen and uh, coming out in June. Now, you had mentioned something about loving coffee. Yes. Which coffee is better, Danish coffee or American coffee? American coffee. All right. Okay. Not, well, that was settled. You, you know, th this is a perfect example of why America. Th this is not just coffee. This is what Americans do, and I love it. You get so into something, and you specialize so much <laughs> in whatever <laughs> field that is. So you can go to a city, and you'll find a bunch of different, not not just play people that you know make coffee, but like people that roast the coffee and the, sh the shops have their own things and and it's incredible i think it becomes a big hobby for a lot of musicians because when you're on tour you get up and the first thing you're going to do is go explore a bit of the of the city so a lot of people become fans of coffee because they get to go to all the coffee shops and you know mm -hmm. they get to see those areas america mm -hmm. has incredible coffee mm -hmm. and i love it i love yeah. it i try different types of coffee and oh my god don't it's get it's definitely <laughs> an art an art form here in the u.s where people you know they make designs with the cream and the, and the oh, glass yeah. so all, all kinds of fun stuff soren hansen's with us here on border crossings it's a pleasure to have him back on it's been at least 10 years a decade's gone by and a lot of changes and things have been going on now i had read in your bio that you were bullied growing yes. up Yes, I was. And I think that that also has to do with, um, you know, the, the, talking about, you know, anxiety and that kind of stuff. You do. Those are those are remnants of trauma in, in some way. It's it's a um, I mean, we moved a lot. I, li I went to eight different schools before I went to high school. Uh, hmm. I lived 17 places before uh, 13 places before I was 17. Wow. And uh, yeah. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. So, so a lot of that um, when when you go through something like that, you you have so much anger. You know, it's 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 just a natural natural um, just response. You know, mm -hmm. and um, and then you direct that anger in different directions. You know, I I directed it into into. Um, just really being having discipline so i had a lot of discipline whenever i was doing something i did it all out to the point where i was probably really annoying to be around for other people because it had to be perfect right um, and um uh, and then you get to the point i think new politics did that for me you know you're getting some confidence you're like oh may maybe the stuff that i'm doing is is actually okay or it's moving other people and you start feeling okay i didn't make this bad decision to be a musician <laughs> you know it actually it actually turned out to be to be the right decision and and you start getting self confidence which is i mean that's no no easy feat it really isn't uh, mm -hmm. and um and you start realizing that the people that the my bullies they grew up with parents that taught them that 
things for a specific way and and uh, they no none of them knew any better and i and i you know you were, i was able to forgive forgive them for that because they you know they they acted out of whatever they knew uh, but it definitely left it left a lot of scars and the good side of that is it also left this amazing discipline that I'm really happy with. And I I don't think that I would be sitting here with you right now if it hadn't been for for all those things. But you know, go, going through all that and and like um and all those those uh different different people that that you know uh where you were exposed to, to a lot of that stuff was um you know it was it was it was not fun and now remember i was going to say in 7th grade i i was in school uh, 70 days out of the year because you know i would i was going through all that so you know mm-hmm. my, my parents they you know they, they didn't know how to necessarily deal with that so so i i stayed home and i played i drew or played piano or you mm-hmm. know i, I kind of became an artist so yeah mm. cuz i was going to ask you you have a big platform. You're a you're a, a major music star, international star around the world, uh, and so you have a lot of people look up to you as their role model. A lot of younger fans that are coming up are discovering you for the first time, and and the older ones too. You said your parents didn't know how to cope with it. How do you? I mean, do you have advice on how to deal with a a low spot in your life? I mean, whether it be bullying or or anything else, you know, social media pressures and and shaming and the haters and all that. I mean, what what, what are your thoughts? I mean, I I think the most important thing is to, to talk about it, to, to be open about it and to, you know, to, I mean, I sincerely mean it that the people who do that kind of stuff, they, their insecurities are just as, as big as your own and and it's easy when it's easy to lean on to other people and if if there's a gang of of people in um in school for example who who um you know one one person does something and and other people laugh at it they're gonna keep doing that um but all that all that comes from insecurities and and I think it's really, really important to talk about it, you know, to, to, to talk to your friends and, and talk to, to parents and, and, and find, find a way to, to cope with it. It's really, really tough. And and it's a really difficult question, right? Because everybody's situation is so different and maybe somebody doesn't necessarily have somebody to talk to and, and, it can just it can it can be oof, it can be it can be i mean you people are causing traumas to to, to other people you know that's uh yes that's mental health is a major is- mental health is a major concern and finally people yeah. are opening up about it and talking yeah. about it it's yeah. always been there but yeah. finally people are now not so afraid to discuss it as yeah. a subject yeah i mean i i I look back and and I I don't I don't always know what the what the answer is you know because my parents chose to move me in and out of schools and uh, I don't know if that helps you know because you right you're already half broken and you get into a new spot you can be quite certain that there's going to be another round of 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 that you know mm-hmm. it's, it's, and you uh, start a friendship and you have to end a friendship and you start a friendship and you have to end a friendship and yeah. maybe there's a girl you like and then you have to move away and it's yeah. it's that's got to be difficult emotionally yeah. difficult it it is very difficult yeah it's uh yeah it's uh you know i i do th- i do think about it you know and and um and i definitely draw draw um inspiration or energy into music fr- from those from those areas even though i'm a i'm a pretty happy person you know but but i think that there's a lot of there's a lot of of beautiful music in sadness as well and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be all sad it, you know you could there can be hope in that mm-hmm. but i think that that emotion is is so powerful and it's something that that you know it's it's okay to feel a specific way we just have to um we just we we have to learn that it's that it's okay you know and mm-hmm. then and then find a balance in in our lives and and that can be that can be really really tough 
Mm-hmm. I'm I'm really glad you're you're asking this, you know, because a lot of people don't talk about this, and and I'm I'm not an expert on it, you know. I, the only thing that I have is is whatever was my way out of that, you know. Right, right. Experience is the best teacher, and you've had experience. Yeah. So you've gone through things that some other people might be going through and not have the answers that you were able to find. We've got Soren Hansen with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now we're talking to you from Nashville. Is that your home studio in Nashville? Yes, it is. Yeah. Very nice. Well decorated in the background. We have a, a time for another song, our third yeah. song. So what song are you going to sing for us now? This one is called Water Under Bridges. Water Under Bridges. Soren Hansen on Border Crossings. I wear my wings to church and the beauty on my sleeves But underneath my skin it's the heart Support of me that's still holding on to the pain that was caused by my enemies. Ain't no river like water on the bridges when fire in your heart goes out like sipper, run like hell is my only intuition. Don't you know? Oh, oh, oh. now I'm saying. Crossing Soren Hansen and Water Under Bridges. Now, uh, the new album is Soren Hansen coming out in uh, June. And you mentioned earlier that one of the songs on the album came to you in an airplane in California. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I would like to ask, where is the most unique place you ever got an idea for a song? Where were you? It was like a song came to you and it was like, I can't believe a song just came to me in this environment. Oh, my gosh. Uh well, that one is up there, right? Especially the lyric. Mm-hmm. I used to be afraid of flying, but I'm not. Af- I'm not afraid of flying uh, anymore because we flew so much. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, just uh, I would say one of the weirder things is when you dream it. So I remember I went to a friend's show once, and 
I loved it. And there was one song I thought was so good. And then I asked him, hey, can I hear that song? And and he was like, I have a CD. <laughs> a CD. <laughs> it was amazing. It's about a laser disc. <laughs> um, I have a CD. Uh, it's like, you can have it. And, and I was like, thank you so much. And I put it on and I listened to the song. I was like, this is so good. And then I was like, wait a second, I'm dreaming. And then I woke up and I grabbed the guitar. I always have a guitar hanging next to my bed because of that, because this happens it happens often. And um, and I recorded the idea, but I felt the whole time that I stole the song from him, even though he, wow. yeah, even though uh, he does, he's not even a musician. That's right, and it was your dream. It's my so dream. You, so you. in a, in a way, it's still his song. But yeah, that that was definitely that one happens. Then I would say the other one is that this one is I I think is also relatable to people because we're so um, we're so dependent on our you know our it's second nature to always have our phone and look at the phone and we need to go there we need to oh now I have to go for a ten minute walk I might as well call this person or or text or whatever it is you know we we always we're always on this phone mm -hmm. and um, uh, a lot of times if you don't do that. You get a lot of ideas. You know, you get a lot of people who drive get a lot of song ideas. Like I know right. Max Martin is this amazing writer. Yeah, uh, apparently he writes a lot of songs on the way to the studio. Doesn't listen to music, just puts a voice memo on, and then records these amazing ideas. And and um, so a lot of times for me, it's a shower. Uh, a lot of new politics ideas came from taking a shower and suddenly you have the melody and the lyrics and you wow. go and you record it and uh, and it turns out to be a, yeah. a great song. The acoustics are great in the shower. So. Oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> the, the, the lesson in that is that is that we have to, um, when when music comes naturally, we're not trying to write a hit. We're not trying to do that, you know, constructing a song when that happens naturally you end up with something that's relatable to people because music in the the essence of music should come from a place where we can we can connect with it and the most the thing we connect the best with is stuff that that is uh that comes from an organic place mm -hmm. i think Emotions. Yeah, emotions. Something, yeah. something deep inside. Mm -hmm. Lauren Hansen is our guest here on Border Crossings. And I have a couple of questions because we're almost out of time. So I wanted to ask, um, the first question is, name three artists you'd like to collaborate with, either dead or alive. Ooh. Um, well, is it like my, my dream list here? Your dream list. Ooh. I mean, Freddie Mercury. I'm not in any way good enough to 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 uh, to even consider these people but like Sam Cooke. Wow! Yeah. My God, and the Beatles. Mm. They would be my. They would probably be my. I mean, that's that's. I'm aiming high here. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, that's okay. We got. We all yeah. got to aim high and set the bar high. Yeah. And I know that you know. I mean, you are diverse in your music, and you've just named three very different artists or acts yeah. so that's kind of that's that's kind of uh interesting you know i mean uh another question that i wanted to ask you before you go is do you remember where you were the first time you heard your music on the radio i do can i can i give you a, a funny answer to that though yeah, you can give me any answer you want okay the first time i ever heard my music on the radio we were driving in our van we were going to uh california and then suddenly they play, this was on our first record, they play the song and we all just flipping out. And then they play the next song too. So wow. it's amazing, right? And then they play the next song on the record again. And then we're like, hey, wait a second. And it turned out we were just listening on, on an iPod. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. It felt just as good though. It felt good, huh? First time I heard the song on the radio was uh, on uh, K-Rock. Um, wow, Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and that was that, that was uh, that was pretty wild. Mm, yeah. That's great. I, you know, you never forget moments like that. You know, no, and, it's, it's it's incredible. Yeah, and then you start pointing at yourself. So that's me. That's me. Yeah, you know, oh, if you're yeah, in the car yeah. listening, you know, roll the window down and say, "Yeah, hey! <laughs> that's it. That's how you do it." Uh, 
for 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 this i i know that a couple of radio stations have played the new song already and um and i i i think i'm gonna start crying if i if i when i hear that you know mm-hmm. well I, you know i'm sure there's going to be many tears to come yeah so are Hansen because you have a great album coming out in june mm-hmm. some great music some real personal heartfelt music and uh I'm looking forward to the album. Before you go, I wanted to give you an opportunity to say hello to the worldwide audience. And uh, that includes the military, the troops that tune in, but we're, we're on around the world globally. So, you know, this is a chance for you to connect with your international fans. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, it's an honor being on here with you and, and wherever you are in the world, just take care of yourselves and, and sending out a lot of positive thoughts and and uh, yeah, be safe and and thank you so much for having me. Mm. Soren Hansen, our guest today. The new album is Soren Hansen. My name is Larry London, and you are watching VOA TV. Mm-hmm.